Hey everybody, so today I'm going to show you how to do this smoke path follow and how to mix different colored smoke together like this. This is very similar or actually the setup is almost identical to my original liquid path follow tutorial. So basically it's the exact same setup except instead of liquid we'll be emitting smoke. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Jesse and I've been making a lot of tutorials which you can check out. Uh, be sure to subscribe and I would appreciate a thumbs up if you guys like the content. So let's make this from scratch. Um, here I am in Max. I just have a random path here which I'm going to use to tell the smoke to follow this path. And you can just create that by going under shape, helix, and you can just drag out uh, whatever path you would like and then you can maybe add more turns to make it more interesting really up to you and i'm working in unit centimeters one unit is one centimeter as always so we can just go under the create panel here under phoenix and create a fire smoke sim box click auto grid and just make sure that you cover the entire spline and now we need to create our emitter. So I will just create a cylinder first, like this. Maybe let's make it a little smaller and then make it an editable poly. Select this polygon, make it ID five. And we've done this a million times. We can make the rest something else. And now we can just name this our emitter 01 and copy it once and then copy it again so that it will have three colors like this and now we need to go under helpers phoenix of d phx source and drag that out and now let's add that first emitter in here and set the polygon id to five and you can set the outgoing velocity to 10 which for me is the default uh, the temperature I did 400 and make sure you check RGB and give it whatever color you would like but I'm gonna do light blue and then you can copy this source and add our emitter too and change the color to maybe that pink and then copy it again and add emitter 3 and change this to a dark blue like this. So that will be our setup for the emitters. And now you can go into the settings for the simulator box. Um, so let's set all of the walls to jammed both, except for this one here. So basically in my example, um, the smoke is killed on the edge here, um, but it bounces off the walls everywhere else. So if I look at the axis here, this is Y. The arrow is pointing this way. So this wall is Y plus, which means that this wall is Y minus. So we wanna say jammed on plus, which means that it's open on minus. And as soon as the smoke reaches this edge, it will die. Um, so you can shrink the grid a little bit to make sure that that will actually happen. Like that. And then we can go under the dynamics. And I actually didn't change anything here whatsoever. It's a very simple setup, so I didn't mess with anything here. But you can go under output and make sure you output RGB. And you can output velocity if you would like for motion blur. I didn't. And just set the path of where you're going to simulate this into. And then you can check under preview, you can check GPU preview, which will give you a nicer preview of the smoke. Um, so now what we need to do is create the path follow or follow path helper. I may have called it body force by accident at the beginning of this video. Sorry guys, I'm getting it all mixed up, but um, just make a path follow helper. And then for the spline, select the helix. And then um, for the settings, I'm just gonna look over to what my original settings were. So for follow speed, I did 75. For pull speed, I did 400. Rotation speed, I left at 50. For influence, I did 0.8. For max distance, I did 50. Fade start, 0 
and pipe radius 15. And again, if you would like a detailed description of what these settings are and what they do, uh, watch this liquid tutorial first. But just very quickly, follow speed is how quickly the smoke will travel along the path. Pull speed is basically the force at which the smoke is forced to be attracted to the path. Rotation speed, um, you know, affects how much the smoke rotates basically along its own axis along the path. Influence is interesting. If you set influence really low, um, then the smoke will sort of go off on its own, just like it does here a little bit. Um, if I set it to one, then this will be pretty much a solid sort of snake without all this detail on the edges. If I lower the influence, there will be much more smoke sort of going rogue and um, going off the path doing its own thing. So that's an interesting parameter to play with, definitely. And then the pipe radius. Basically, if you were to imagine a pipe along this spline, so if I just say enable in viewport and radial, um, so if the pipe thickness is 15, then the smoke will do its best to stay within the boundaries of this imaginary pipe. So now that you have all of that set up, you should be able to just go under simulation and start and make sure that everything is working. All right, guys, so I hit sim and it wasn't working. And I think this just goes to show you that there's always some troubleshooting that you have to do in order for this stuff to work. So basically what I realized is that Phoenix will determine what is the beginning of a path and what is the end. And right now my objects are at the end of the path. So I have to move the cylinders to the beginning of the path here. And now when I hit Sim, the smoke is in fact being attracted by the path and everything is working as it should while before the smoke was just headed straight for the ground because it was trying to find the beginning of the path. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but everything is working now. And also one other thing that I changed is that you might want to increase the max distance here, which basically tells Phoenix if the object is further than 500 centimeters away from the path, then it will not be affected. So the initial value was 50. So just in case you might want to raise this to some high number. In the meantime, everything is working over here. The smoke is following the path. By default, it will not display the RGB colors. You have to go under rendering, uh, volumetric options, and then under smoke color, switch from constant color to RGB. And now you can see that it's displaying the colored smoke and how it's mixing in real time. So at this point, with everything being set up, I'll just show you my original final scene, which was this. Um, so this was my result, which gave me um, this when I rendered it out. And you can see that I actually ended up adding a turbulence force, just a very subtle force. So you can create that under helpers, Phoenix and PHX turbulence, you can just drag that out and everything in the scene will be affected by this turbulence. And I just did uh, 20 for strength, 50 for size, which just helps to break up the smoke a little bit and make it mix together more. But again, all of these settings you can play with to get some much cooler effect or anything that you're after. But this is the basic setup, very simple. Hope you guys found this helpful. If you did, as always, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Uh, be sure to subscribe because I'll be posting a lot more tutorials. Thank you again for watching and I'll talk to you later.